WWRR, Scranton, Wilkesbury, WYCK, Plains, WMMZ, Berwick, Bloomsburg, Hazleton, powered by Mohegan, Pennsylvania. This is the River 105 and 1035. This is music on the menu on the river. Featuring Northeast PA's best artists. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Never mind. She can move me like the stereo, like a song on the radio. She's an angel in the morning, yeah, that's me. And now, here's your host, Alan K. Stout. So I got that going for me, which is nice. All right, everybody. Happy Sunday night. Welcome to Music on the Menu on the River. Alan K. Stout with you, as I always am. Sunday nights, 9 to 10, bringing you regional artists from northeastern Pennsylvania, doing their own original music, hanging out with D.C. Taylor. D.C., good evening. Yes, good evening, Alan. How are you? I'm doing great. Holiday weekend. How, how, yes, it is. So, yes. Um, we don't say, I don't, I don't like saying happy Memorial Day. Right. It's, it's a day to observe uh, our fallen veterans. Exactly. And so uh, for those of you observing, uh, if you family member of yours, um, you know, we uh, respect your loss and what your family did uh, yep. for our country. And we will have some special music in memory of those veterans uh, here throughout the program tonight, yep. as we always do on the Sunday before Memorial Day. But uh, we have a special guest in the studio. Um, and I was looking forward to this now for, we've been trying to set this up. She's a busy young lady, um, Gabby Lang, who is the entertainment writer for the recently relaunched Weekender uh, mm -hmm. in the studio with us. Gabby, welcome to Music on the Menu. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about the Weekender and everything we've been working on. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the relaunch, because the Weekender, obviously, I was there in the beginning, believe it or not, in 1993. So 30 years ago, it was in the summer of 93 that plans for the Weekender began. Maybe fall of 93. I know it launched in November. I, I remember that specifically. So you have a big 30-year <laughs> anniversary coming up later this year for the publication. But during COVID and during you know some of the, the, the struggles that everybody went through, the, it, the Weekender was put on hiatus for a while. Yeah, and, that's right. And everybody maybe thought, well, you know, maybe it's not coming back. And then, you know, I heard from your publisher, Carrie, a couple of months ago, uh, letting me know that it was coming back and she introduced us. And I've been following the page on social media and on your website and see that you are out there kicking down doors and getting stories and <laughs> doing a terrific job of covering arts and entertainment in Northeastern Pennsylvania. So... Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about the relaunch and how it came to be and how you got involved. That's right. So the relaunch happened right at the very beginning of 2023. So we went right into the new year, bringing back the Weekender. Um, the Times Leader found that the need was there. The demand was there. People wanted to have the Weekender back and have that entertainment news that those updates about live music and art and things that are happening right in town. I think we really got away from that when we were we were kind of shut down during the pandemic. So this really new beginning gives us a chance to not only get that stuff back out there, but kind of give a fresh yeah. approach to the weekender and um, kind of a new vision. So. I got involved with it. Um, I saw that they were looking for an entertainment writer, and I've been a writer all my life. Uh, my degree is in creative writing, so oh, cool. it felt like the perfect perfect match for we'll, me. We'll talk to you a little bit about that background. Yeah, I mean, I think, I actually, I remember The Weekender did relaunch, I think, in 2021 for a briefly with hard print again, because mm -hmm. it was right when I went over to the visitors bureau and we, we were carrying it and then it disappeared again and then it came back. And so I know that one of the things that Carrie had told me, uh, I believe is that, and I think this is interesting, uh, is that 
someone I think was interested in purchasing it from the Times leader. Like, I don't know who that was. <laughs> I didn't ask, but that made them realize, I guess they wanted a, the, the right to the name and may, and I guess maybe the Facebook page which still has like 20,000 followers, right? Yes, that's right. And we weren't ready to give it up <laughs> just yet. <laughs> so, you know, that that's kind of interesting that, you know, sometimes you're sitting on something and you say, well, there's still a lot of interest here and not somebody wants to buy it. Maybe we should mm -hmm. relaunch it ourselves. Yes, <laughs> that was definitely the thinking that went into bringing it back. Um, not only were the people missing it, but, you know, we had kind of this final pull to really make something of the Weekender again. So um, they brought me in to really get that back going with, with that fresh vision and, sure. and make it make it something useful for everybody to receive again. And with it being online, now you, you get stories every day. You don't have to wait, wait necessarily till for the Wednesdays weekend. Wednesdays or Thursdays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking about it. I remember the folks that started it back in 93, some of the people in the 90s, Sarah Starr, Tom Oberzit, uh, later a bunch of people that I was friends with, uh, Christy Greer, Joe Student, Mike Lello, Nikki Miscali, Rich Howells, um, Matt Matei, uh, Rich still does arts and entertainment, of course, with any PA scene, but he started with the Time Leader Company and The Weekender. Um, you know, there's this tradition there of of some really fabulous entertainment writers. And we I, we also had a terrific sales staff when I was there with Rachel Pugh and, and her staff. Um, so I, I'm glad to see you carrying the torch. Uh, Thank you. And we wish you all the best. And we're going to talk a lot more about what you have plans for the weekender after uh, we get to some music. Let's kick the show off with one for those fallen veterans that we talked about earlier. Beautiful song, very poignant song. We always play this on Memorial Day weekend from No Vacancy. It's called Fallen.
sin Music on the Menu with Alan K. Stout. This is The River.
Fink here on Music on the Menu, a song called Standing on the Sun. He recently had a terrific show at the River Street Jazz Cafe, had a great time catching air. And before that, No Vacancy, with a song called Fallen. We dedicate that one tonight to all of our fallen veterans. We're hanging out here with Gabby Lang from The Weekender. They restarted the, pro- the, uh, the, the publication online about six months ago, mm-hmm. right at the beginning of the year, as she told us. And she's out there covering arts and entertainment and posting stories and kind of keeping her finger on the pulse of what's going on with music and concerts and events. And that's what The Weekender's been doing for 30 years. So you're carrying on a tradition. What are some of your favorite parts of the job now that you've been at it for a couple of months? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I've always had a love for local. um, And in a lot of the past jobs I've had, I've just been very focused on making this area the best it can be and everybody knowing about all the cool things that we're doing. So I love being plugged into what's happening in the arts and the live music scene and new bands coming on onto the stages around here, venues coming back. I think it's very exciting. So I, I really enjoy being involved in what's happening locally like that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the always being... Where are you from originally? I'm from the North Pocono area, okay. so I grew up around here, mm-hmm. and I've kind of moved around a little city to city. Lived in the Scranton area for a little bit. Now I'm in the Tunkanic area, yeah. And I've just had a place in my heart for each of these places around here. NEPA is a beautiful PA place. Region. Yeah, mm-hmm. we had a pretty good footprint in the Poconos for a while with the Weekender too. So you mm-hmm. may have seen it when you were growing up. Um, Absolutely. So. Absolutely. I've, I've, I've been reading The Weekender for, oh man, as long as I can remember, I guess. It's always been a part of the scene, the art scene, the music scene, and just the entertainment scene as a whole. You know, here's how I feel about it, too. I mean, I, I was the editor of The Weekender for two years myself. I think I told you that when we first met a couple months ago. Yes. Um, my music column, Music on the Menu, same name as this show. Ran in the Weekender from 2005 to to about six years. It was in the Times Leader for longer than that, but it was in the Weekender every week for six years. I am of the belief that the more people writing about arts and entertainment for a community, the better. I know that there's competitiveness sometimes with who wants to get the story first, who wants to do the better story. I get that. I was part of that world for a long time too. Um, But, you know, I feel like, the more the merrier. We we it, it's if you if you really care about the artists and you care about the events and you're not thinking about yourself, you wish that I mean, I wish that every radio station had a show like this. You know, I really do. Mm-hmm. Um I'm glad that we have one. I'm so grateful that the river has been allowing me to do it here for uh ten years now. And prior to that I was on for nine years prior to that. But I really do feel like, you know, as a community of arts and entertainment, and especially now that I work for the Visitors Bureau, but I, but I always felt this way. We need to work together. Have you felt like a camaraderie in of any way with the arts and entertainment community? Have people been receptive to you reaching out to them and, you know, introducing yourself and saying, I'm from the Weekender and we're back? Absolutely. You know, I've received a great response. Pretty much every time I reach out to somebody about a story, reach out to a local business or band, they're so excited to talk about what they're working on. And I love that. I think we need more of that energy in publications. It's really a positive approach always when I talk to people. They're grateful for the recognition. They want everybody to know what they're working on. And it's not so much about... Uh, being popular and the event being popular, I th- they just believe in what they're doing and they want people to know about it. They want people to know about it, and that's what that's what that's your job now. Yeah, I love it. It it mm-hmm. really warms my heart every time I meet a new person, and there are so many cool people in this community doing cool things. So I really. <laughs> It's very enjoyable getting to know so many different things that are happening in this area. There's there's things happening in museums. There's things happening in venues, big venues, and even the small, small venues, venues yeah. the 
the bars are having more and more live music again. So bringing that attention back to all different places is it's important to me and it's important to them. I've had a great time with music over the last week, literally uh, <laughs> at the arena with 8,000 people at the fine arts fiesta, you know, with 2000 yes. people at the river street jazz cafe with 400 people, you know, it, you know, all over the place. So I, I, I hear what you're saying. Let's keep the music rolling here with another of the great young artists from Northeastern Pennsylvania. This is Joe Burke and company, a song called Gray. Chasing time like I've got some to waste. Writing right. Thinking they'll fix my pace Praying hard I put the great love on it Great love on my road Selling my confidence in childish ways Timidly searching through the blue and the gray But I get lost in what I am saying Sleeping, 
found a new hustle. Alyssa Lazar here on Music on the Menu with a song called New Hustle. A lot of folks came to know Alyssa over the last couple months with her television success on The Voice. Uh, we've been playing here on the show now for about two years, so we're just thrilled for her. Before that, Eddie Epnell, one of the all-time greats from Northeastern Pennsylvania with a song called Maybe Nevermind. And before that, Joe Burke and Company with a song called Gray. And, of course, Joe will be opening for the Badleys at the Rock and the River Music Series on July 28th, Joe Burke and Company. So great stuff to look forward to this summer. We're going to take a quick break now. When we come back, we'll keep chatting with Gabby Lang from The Weekenders. So stick around. I am D.C. Taylor from The River. The Rock in the River music series will return to Wilkes-Barre this summer. The shows brought to you by Visit Luzerne County are free and take place at the Millennium Circle at the River Common alongside the beautiful Susquehanna River. July 14th will feature Satisfaction, an international Rolling Stones tribute with special guest The Tribe. July 21st will feature An Evening with Stevie, a tribute to Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac with special guest Plus Three. And July 20th, 28th will feature the Badleys with special guests Joe Burke and company. There will also be food and drink vendors. Major sponsors include Geisinger, Discover NEPA, and the city of Wilkes-Barre. Powered by the River, 105 and 1035. All right, we're back here on Music on the Menu. We played this great uh, new artist tonight on the show so far, Joe Burke and company, Alyssa Lazar, artists that have come our way over just the last you know, a few years, uh, Sleep Lore is a project we're a big fan of. University Drive, Jordan McGuire, Don't Panic, John Burgo, Fosh, Vine Street, Another Day Dawns, Cast and the Bailout Crew. One of the things, Gabby, that I always find so much fun about doing this show is that even though I've been doing it a long time and I have a big catalog of music going back decades, um, the younger artists that continue to develop and send us their stuff as well. And I know that that's something that you're, starting to tap into quite a bit um, with your position at the weekend. That's right. Who are some of your uh, favorite bands on the music scene here in Northeastern Pennsylvania? Ooh, uh, that's a toughie. There's so many good ones, and I've been getting to know so many more of them more closely doing the live music list every week. Um, one of my favorites is definitely Dustin Douglas and the Electric Gentleman. I did a story on them and then I couldn't stop listening to the music. <laughs> so I've been jamming on that with, on my phone, uh, pretty much the last couple months. <laughs> um, but artist. I, yeah, big fan of Dustin. Mm -hmm. He's, yeah. he's great. <laughs> I also, I've never been disappointed when seeing nowhere slow live or oh, sure. black tie stereo. They're oh, always yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And also they, they have the, uh, they also go by the another name when they're playing more of their original music, modern, modern ties. Mm. So you have Black Tie Stereo is more the cover band portion, and then Modern Ties, which is the original, both the same band, uh, just terrific artists. They've been, all those folks have been guests here on the show. Dustin's been here a bunch of times, and Modern Ties has been on the show. Um, That's great. It's kind of cool to know that you were uh, tapping into them as well. Yeah, absolutely. I get to cover a lot of hard rock bands as well the Holtzman effect was a really good one doubting thomas was another really good one we have a lot of great music in this area and i, I keep being surprised each time yeah. i listen to a new artist um but it's not just the hard rock music you mentioned jordan mcguire he's an old friend of mine oh, and really? uh he's i i love his out pop music i yeah. think it it's something a little different for this area we've been playing him on the show a lot lately and you also mentioned when we were off the air another day dawns they just killed it up at the uh, up at the arena with mm. the, on, they were on the bill with bush and breaking ben yes they put out great music as well I, i've been a fan even before the weekender of them <laughs> terrific let's keep the show rolling with some more music this is a band we just debuted this year uh portland frank Features um, Paul Young, formerly of Panacea. Also features Marty Monahan from The Boastfuls. Uh, terrific music. This is the second track that they've sent us. This one's called The Last Time. <laughs>
Mike Miz, and you're listening to Music on the Menu with Alan K. Stout on The River. Now I'm not asking for the world to give me the things I think I need. I ain't even asking for love. I'm not begging for the sky to give me a brand new pair of wings Or even the shooting stars above All I'm asking is stay today, forever Just stay today and you'll see Just stay today, forever Today with me Now I'm not asking for the road to show me The way that I should go I ain't even asking for a sign And I don't need the wind to whisper The things I want to hear Or to promise that I'll always be fine all I'm asking is stay today forever Just stay today and you'll see Just stay today forever Just stay today These questions a thousand times or more But every answer only leaves me somehow wanting more And I have longed for your touch in the darkness of my day Now icicles are forming on the words I need to say Now I'm not asking for a second glance If the first one wasn't clear I no longer 
need to be saved And I don't want this life to shelter me from what I fear For I finally found the will to be brave I don't need the answers to the mysteries of life I don't need no savior telling me what's wrong or right and I don't need the angels to sing that song for me For I have faced my demons and my soul is finally free All I'm asking is stay today forever Miz here on Music on the Menu with a song called Stay Today Forever. And before that, Portland Frank, new music, a song called Last Time. We're talking with Gabby from The Weekender, talking about the history of The Weekender a little bit, talking about you know the current situation with The Weekender, which she is overseeing. Um, the one thing that I know you're going to have a little bit of a challenge with, and we, you and I talked about it off mm-hmm. the air, is it was about six, seven years ago, The Weekender published a column and. Uh, DC, you actually remember the name of it. I couldn't remember it. It was yeah, called the guy. I think it was called Sorry Mom and Dad. Sorry or Mom something. and Dad. Yeah. Uh, ironic. We're talking about this on Memorial Day weekend because he wrote a column that was somewhat uh, disparaging, if I recall, to a veteran who he had met up at Tink's. If he was trying to punk the guy, or what was the word you used, DC, to uh, describe it? Uh, it was the f- one of the first times I heard the term stolen valor. I think stolen he was, valor. He was com- claim- claiming that he was a veteran so he could try to get free drinks or something. something and like that. it wound up not being true. Yeah. Uh, and it, the guy got fired. Mm. And the weekend, he got a black guy um, for that column. And so a challenge is to, and, a, and still tremendous people, people that I work with working for that company. And it was dealt with and they moved on. Um, Mm -hmm. but it, it, you know, for people like myself that had worked there and saw the magazine thrive for decades. And and I was a part of that for a a couple of years and the people that I work with at that time, you know, I think we all were, took it as, um, a punch to the gut a little bit like, Oh, you know what? And so I want to thank you. You know, I want to thank you and, and, and what Matt Matei had done a few years ago too, for, for, for moving on and putting that behind and bringing the weekender back. Um, you know, well, thank that, you. you had nothing to do with that. You know, you didn't even really know much about it. You're a young mm-hmm. person. Uh, and, but you know, it's something that you might have people talk to you about for once in a while. And just tell them, Hey, listen, yeah. it was dealt with and we've moved on. You mm-hmm. know? And so I, I, I want to thank you for, for that and wish you, you know, the best as you cover arts and entertainment. What can we look forward to uh, in the next couple of months from the weekend? It's festival season. We've got Briggs. We've got, you know, Rock in the River. I know you've already talked about being interested in that. What else are you looking at? Montage? Yes, I appreciate it. We are looking forward to, oh, uh, Motionless and White in September. That will be a nice big one. That's at the Kirby Center, right? That it yep. is. Um, there's a lot of festivals in northeastern Pennsylvania this year. You have Peach Festival coming up. 
Um, in the Poconos, they have the Elements Festival for EDM fans. I feel like there's a little bit of something for every genre of music lover that we have. Um, so it's going to be a good year for NEPA music. I, I think we're back in full swing after the pandemic. There has been no shortage of None topics at all. to cover. <laughs> That's for sure. And, and it's great. I, I love getting to spread the word about what we have going on. I appreciate what you're doing. We all do. I know DC feels feels. Thank the same. you, thank you. I, I'm glad that we are able to move away from that and really create a new version of the weekend or that feels like a new voice. We have really a new approach to it. It's um, a little more positive, I think, with my voice behind uh, it. If I don't, if yeah. I, uh, you know. If it, that's okay it, to say. It, it always was. It was just that little brief period there. It was like, whoa. You know, and so back on track. It's all you. It's all you, girl. It's all you. Thank you. go, you. girl. I appreciate it. Let's, and I love getting to do it. It's been wonderful. Let's play one from that band that rocked the arena a week or two ago, Breaking Benjamin. This way, I just can't take your breath away. You cut me. Hey, this is Dustin Douglas from Dustin Douglas and the Electric Gentleman, and you're listening to the music on the menu with Alan K. Stout on the river.
Kate here on Music on the Menu, a song called Pieces of You. Before that, Dustin Douglas, who I know Gabby's a big fan of. She <laughs> talked about it earlier, a song called Daydream. Before that break in Benjamin, with a song called Next Nothing. Gabby from The Weekender, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you. Thank you. wish you all the best. Where can we find The Weekender? It's The Weekender website. What's your Dot com. Theweekender.com. Yep, we're and still there. Find yeah. them online and on Facebook, posting stories every day. Mm -hmm. so, so. Yes, news stories every day on theweekender.com. You can also follow us on our Facebook. Fantastic. We'll leave you with another one for the veterans. This is the Badly song written about a veteran coming home. It's Drive Back Home. We'll catch you next week. Took a ride up through the mountains of my hometown Made me feel just like an angel Looking down All the places I remember All the people still the same All the things I ran away Every Father's son, son, son.